Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I'm going to sketch from the John Singer Sargent book that I've been working from. I'm using the Derwent drawing pencils, um, but I think I'm just going to stay with one color. I'm going to use the um, ink blue. The paper that I'm looking at is Strathmore Drawing. Uh, it's 9 by 12, uh, 80 pound. So I've been using this book. I've been just having it like in the bedroom, in the living room, and just will pick up any type of drawing material and just start sketching from this book just to um, try to pick up Mr. Sargent's approach to these uh, portrait drawings. And with them, that being said, um, I'll just I'll just jump into it. So I'm nowhere near a good portrait artist or anything like that. I'm just using this summer to practice these things and to um, experiment with different materials. I'll usually mark the top of the head, the eye line about halfway through it, general location of the nose, and we got our lips and then the chin. And I'll kind of just play around with it from there and look for the proportions and adjust them accordingly. And I've just been playing around with um, allowing myself to put guidelines to look for the lineup between like the inside of this eye and the nostril on the right side is where that opens. Playing around with just putting in lips in the correct fashion, um, etc. It's just one of those things where you have to practice it over and over and over again and just try to get a little bit better each time or uh, subtly start adding more and more to your approach. For example, I've been playing around with just kind of getting that whole eye socket in there, that whole circular effect. And then from there, um, carving out the shapes within. So getting the circular shape for the nose, for the nostril. Um, looking at how the chin here is that short circular shape. Uh, pushing things back and forth. I'll tell you right now, there's thousands upon thousands of different uh, better portrait painters that are, or portrait drawers, that are producing content on YouTube, on um, on Patreon, on uh, all these different platforms. But I've been enjoying chronicling my process and relearning. And I think um, you know, some people might find it interesting, might get some value out of it. In fact, uh, to talk about Joe Menza a little bit, he's talked about a lot of his um, videos often being a kind of chronicling his journey as well. So I guess don't look at this one too much as like a how-to, but maybe um, just a see how I'm developing things. I was fortunate enough to take life drawing classes in college um, and painting, things like that, but that's um, years behind me, so it's been quite some time. I was perusing my Facebook and um, did find stuff from years ago, and I could tell how much I've changed and grown in that short time period, well, not short time period, but since college. And it's interesting to have that, but I like it as a personal reference. Uh, one thing that I've been finding that I need to do is follow my line across and then place my eyes in relationship to that. Uh, and this one, I often find that coming up and that hump over and 
bend that down and that hump up it just seems to be prevalent within the uh the singer portraits seems like he, he uses this uh position quite a bit uh nostril i always do not like this little mark right here so i've been playing around with different ways to do it because it's definitely there and a lot of people do put it in and so does mr sergeant but i want to put it in correctly kind of um block in a little bit of my tonal value i am going to going back and forth and i can tell you right now that's probably one of my uh, mistakes that i'm making is jumping back and forth between those things but that being said i am always kind of trying to work a painting or a drawing all at once and not put too much detail into one spot and i think there's a lot of different approaches in that regard for example some people will do the grid method and will have hammy just jump right you can't lay down dude <laughs> he jumped right on it and then you actually saw he tried laying down that's exactly where he wants to be anyway um you'll see people do the grid method and they'll take the grid over a uh, photograph or something like that and that'll help them put out proportions or they'll do one grid at a time i don't think i ever in my life had done something in that method i just um i don't know just uh, something that i had never tried Anyway, I've been trying to focus on the folds of eyelids and all the different things that take place in there. And I'm wondering if that's one of the ways to focus on the age aspect within a drawing. It's hard to get the shape of that pupil in there. Another area that I'm lacking is just the uh, formal names of the different portions. I'll watch um, some professional portrait drawers on YouTube or you know find them on Google and they'll know the names of those different spots and they'll know like the name of the bone or the fold and it might seem like a little snooty of them when they're doing that. Oh, I'm going to finish this slot, so don't think of it as a negative thing. But I think that knowing those names and how that folds and how that interacts is probably one of the big things that separates generally um, portrait artists that are professional from amateur ones because knowing this fold right here which I don't know the name of but knowing the name of it and then looking for it and seeing how it is in relationship and how it pulls different parts of the face well is probably beneficial sorry that's just a weird rant anyhow just kind of scribbling in that collar the ear here the nose From what I've read and seen is that the nose usually ends, the bottom of the nose is usually lining up with the bottom of the ear. I think that's the case, but in every single singer portrait that I've looked at, or most of them, 
it's usually the upper lip or something like that that's affecting it. So I don't know if it's the change of the view that he has or the angle that he's at. So let's see. We're gonna have that hair that comes out here. We're gonna have that line up and back. We have I don't know what type of hat that is, but I'm gonna mark it. We'll play around. I like these Dermot drawing pencils. They feel really nice on the paper. You know, a lot of people will say they're kind of buttery smooth. And I think that is definitely an accurate assessment. But I'm just not a person that uses multiple colors. Or if I do, I just want them to be really muted and they are really muted but I usually just stay within one or two colors when I'm ever I'm doing almost anything now at this point I did play with some regular graphite pencil yesterday and that was uh, really enjoyable and that really surprised me I had um, an old Blick set that wasn't complete and I just used one that they had labeled F so I guess we're fine and then like a 6B like so a boulder let's put that I'm thinking that it's kind of the eyebrow but it's also the folds in here I just don't like saying too long in any spot. In any type of art. We have, I guess that's the septum right there. We have the upper lip. It's going to come out to about here. I'm trying to um, just watch some individual videos on lips or reading through individual things. But you know how I just kind of mark them in and then then I kind of run away from that spot almost, where I then run down to here, into the darker portion here, and come up long. You can see a lot of cross hatching or gestural marks in this one. I'm just going to use the side to put that tone in. I'm going to come back on this side. I think what I'll do now is kind of put in the background. Um, seems in general, and I had watched a video where somebody had commented on his use of vertical lines in the background. So I'm going to use that. And I was talking about it with a, a friend when I had did a drawing of my cat. And they had said that the vertical lines kind of blended into the cat and helped it lost some of the form, which made sense. But I was also thinking lost and found edges. So doing something like this on this side and looking at the picture that I'm working from, there is that lost and found edge taking place throughout. 
on that far cheek. But how do you have it read as a lost and found edge and not as just a muddling? That's the question. And how did he achieve that? I'm just doing some simple gestures in for this um, part of the clothing. It's dark in here. And we'll come back into the face in a moment. I'm going to continue with that vertical background. I did see in other ones where he would do angled lines to the portrait. Vertical lines do prevent the eye from going too quickly from left to right. So there is that. And I am working with a medium that I haven't truly explored its absolute like tonal values and how dark it can get. In fact, this one I think had, I had just sketched one of the gentlemen that he had um, he had sketched, I used this color, but it was a light sketch. This is once again the ink blue. Let's just bring that to the edge. And what I've been doing is if they come out decent, like I try to put my name in after sergeant on the bottom just in case they wind up out of my hands. But also, um, really hasn't been much uh, painting sales lately. I think you know it's the summer and we are seeing a lot of inflation currently as of this video. But that being said, I think with these, I'll put them in a pile. And I like to put extra gifts into a package whenever somebody orders a painting. So I think things like this in these studies might make for fun gifts. We'll look at that collar again and then we'll go back into the face. All right. The darker side of the chin. That's um, one thing I've been thinking about in portrait drawing and looking at sergeants. If I should be, and I'm kind of making that swooping motion there to show what I'm referencing, if that protruding chin in general is something that I should be looking for often. I don't like the dark outline there, so I'm going to just try to bring that dark into that background to kind of get that lost and found edge. He definitely put a lot more time into this hat than I am. He had shaded the underside of it. We'll play around with the eraser in a moment. This is coming in here and it's creating Intention 
Then we come in, thin off that cheekbone. I think darken these eyes. Look very wonky currently. Let's see. That the folds that I was talking about. This comes closer. This gets darker. This comes up. Let me um, start pushing around. I think I messed up the proportion height-wise of the head, of the face. portion of that collar. Stand up and get a different look. This erases easily enough. Soften it. I'm going to go back into it. Up and over. And we wind up coming to this fold. So this is something I want to explore. You see the same. Here, we have that darkness of the nose, then leading into the darkness here. So we have that kind of path throughout. around here
just you now just trying to gently shade in and see how that's working for me. There is a line there. side that comes in comes down Look at it through the lens. It's starting to come together. Where um, I think I pointed out so far, one of the biggest mistakes that I made was I think just the vertical height of the head that there should have been more there. So I'm gonna play around with the other aspects of the head and the face and just work on tonal values and textures at this point. And seeing how far I can push that but that being said I know right now the biggest mistake that I made was the um, the vertical how to fix something like that at this point I have no idea I think that accomplished portrait artists wouldn't make that mistake um, but they probably have made that mistake in their training and then watch for that in, in future, um, you know, portraits. So that's something to just keep in mind, you know, look for your mistakes, look for your, the good and the bad, the wins and the losses. And I'm always talking about experimenting and, and learning. And maybe I can make it more narrow if I bring this up some. Like, to correct the head. Uh, like I said, there's, there's probably numerous solutions that accomplished people would know at this point. But maybe we can make it seem more of a tilt that's taking place maybe changing those things um maybe i can try to bring this kind of job line in up and that would make it seem a little bit more narrow and we see more of the side of the head right here maybe that's what it would be bring that ear in we'll use the uh electric eraser see if i can get it to pull out yeah I think that's the thing it's just doing just doing and practicing and every time just getting a little bit better uh, analyzing it and looking my ultimate end goal is to practice sergeant enough or Baldini enough or you know those people that I really admire portrait wise or just, you know, in general. If I can look at them, practice them, and then adopt it to either photographs of friends or family or photographs online and have some semblance of um, a portrait of a realism taking place.
I did read that Sargent had moved a lot of his commissions and stuff over to um, pencil and charcoal and just drawings um, just due to like the the drying time and all these other um, the negative aspects of oil painting which I mean drying time is kind of a, maybe a positive but you know for him from what I was reading it was like you know three hours to get graphite or charcoal in a sitting as opposed to like other scenarios Apparently, the modernists of the time were not the biggest fans of Sargent. I think he's now viewed as the gap between the old world and the, the new world of painting and art. There's a darkness right here underneath that ear. I think little things like that might help get the narrower face. A few resources for anybody that's watched this far into the video. On YouTube, there's an oil painter and I just forget his name. Uh, but he has a whole bunch of great stuff up. Uh, I need to go and look him up. But if you look up uh, Twa or Three Crayon Technique, um, there's a fantastic gentleman that has a video of three different Three Crayon Techniques uh, for portraiture and, and shows examples of those. Um, if you're looking to spend money, David LaFell has... Uh, Bright Light Fine Art, which has oil painting um, portraitures on it, at least like the starting hour and a half for most portraitures. Um, but I think that that's very beneficial, especially if you're looking at oils. Um, I was simply looking up um, Sargent sketching, Sargent drawings on YouTube or Google. That'll help. Just um, creating a little bit of that outfit. Um, who else? A anything on Watteau? W a t t e a u. I think he was like the Rococo French period. I think he died at a young age, but there's a lot of uh, drawings and sketch material from him. In fact, uh, one video that I was watching uh, from a professor, it was on YouTube, he had talked about how uh, Watteau had shown um, different ethnicities, different uh, social classes, um, all those things, you know, things that were very, you know, much uh, taking place in, I think, France during the time period. I think it was French, Watteau. Close that off up here. Uh, Ruben's drawings are celebrated quite a bit. I have a book with Ruben's, like the same kind of Dover Library type of book of Ruben's, but I haven't looked too much into that. I personally really enjoy the illustrative style of Charles Gibson, uh, Gibson Girls, kind of just getting this hair a little bit more rounded out and going into it. I'm liking that. Uh, who else? I think that should be a lot of good ways to get y'all started if you're interested in these type of things. Um, and of course, you're welcome to watch and follow my exploration and studies and seeing where it goes. I don't want them to be viewed as teachings or anything like that because 
there's probably a million things I'm doing wrong and a million approaches that uh, paid professors and people who study it day in and day out would knock me for, which I would rightfully so, you know, they have a way more academic background and can share a lot more information in this regard. I think watching the progress might be enjoyable for some people of me learning. This one eye does seem to be like kind of like a lazy eye looking away in the drawing. I remember um, watching some sort of documentary. I don't know. Let's just let's just say it was on um, Da Vinci. I don't know who it was, but let's say it was Da Vinci. And they were looking at the two eyes, and they were saying like the eyes there's something off perspective wise. But I think it was if you close one eye and draw with that one, and then you open your other eye or close the other eye. And draw from the other one that's what was essentially taking place within those drawings if you know what I'm referring to let me know down below also something like this I need to I should know the absolute size of it the original because here with it would have been 8 by 10 in those marks usually and this is 9 by 12. I unfortunately don't have a huge amount of room for big easel stuff. That's, um, that's one of the goals, you know, once I buy a house. I rent a two-bedroom right now, and, um, one room is dedicated solely to art. And even the bathroom is blacked out for darkroom stuff. I haven't really done photography stuff. It's just been uh, summer, which gives you plenty of time to do it, but it's just been uh, so hot. And um, I think there are tricks to prevent the moisture collecting on your camera and everything, but I haven't tried any of them. Let's bring out some of that ear. These electric erasers are fantastic. Well, they just had a prime day. I don't know if anybody picked up any art supplies during that. Let me know if you picked up anything there. I am, um, I had wanted to look for stuff to help stream content easier online and on uh, Twitch. But I really don't know what type of um, materials are needed for that. So I didn't have the knowledge going into Prime Day with that. But that's down the line. I'll do that. I want to start doing the Twitch live streaming again. And I have just the basic setup, which is fine. And let me know if that's something that interests you all. If you would like to see live real time where we can kind of converse and have fun. Just doing this uh, motion to just kind of darken that tonal value. It's shaking the table some, but. Let's see if we can bring out the highlight here.
this, you start seeing a texture come up. That underside. Give me a little texture in these spots. So we get the lightest like kind of tonal change in it. I think we need it darker. this up a little bit in here. I think, why does it look so dark right there in the camera? But I don't have that darkness. Let's see if I can achieve that darkness. How's that look? It gives a little bit more roundness to the face, I think. Then I think it's also real time me just learning the medium as well. Just a lot of things going on at once. All right, I think we'll, like I said, sign it, we'll do Andrew Broussard, and we'll do after. Sergeant. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this content, if you like all this exploration, um, I have the Patreon and I have the uh, coffee uh, links down below where you can donate and help support this channel. That really helps... Um, with obtaining materials, um, exploring different things. And I think I want to start setting up some end goals of um, maybe, you know, just like books, more edited videos. Um, I think there's a lot of directions that I can head in with all this stuff. And I'm, I'm starting to contemplate all those things. So. I really appreciate all your support and thank you so much. You all take care and have a great day. Bye.